President Nelson Mandela, uh, the transition into democracy. And today we have over 140 old representative missions just in, in Pretoria, not, uh, you know, not to mention. Truly, truly honored to be participating in this forum and, and it's so timely in terms of the launch of this book. Um, I think I take great pride that I was able to, you know, write a forward, which is very, very uh, pertinent and also we're looking forward to all the recommendations that Mr. Fernando has made and that in terms of the interconnectivity as well as trade, especially post-COVID. I don't know, I'll just quickly briefly say what Nora is and as I think um, the other speakers have already alluded that this concept came from no other than Mr. Nelson Mandela when he went to India in 1995 on a state visit. And you know, Mr. Nelson Mandela is that gentleman. In Sri Lanka, we are offering many incentives for the foreign investors and also for our legal system. Of course, though there are some shortcomings. By four broad principles uh, uh, towards Africa, that would be uh, being a partner in development administration, trade and investment, strong people-to-people -people ties and uh, defense and maritime security. In terms of development and the partnership, there are uh, uh, there have been a lot of projects where India has um, uh, India has been involved in African countries. Even currently, uh, there are uh, there are. Part, we're going to just celebrate and congratulate uh, Dr. Fernando on the launch of his book. And I've known Dr. Fernando for many years, and I'm just continuing to be impressed by his love for his country his intimate knowledge of the South Asian region. It's really his passion for peace. He's taught me a lot during our discussion. And I'm sure every one of you uh, must have heard about uh, the regional integration uh, process, uh, regional cooperation, as well as about interdependencies. So this book, which uh, Mala introduced, uh, politics, economics, connectivity in search of uh, South Asian Union relates to all this about interdependencies, regional integration, as well as cooperation. Today we are we really done. When Srimal came to me as a student and somebody told him this three very common phrase that Sark is dead, I really told him that this is your starting point. Those people who don't have any ideas will criticize you, but let's start on a scratch and let's see what exactly is coming on board. There are neighbors which are physical neighbors. There are digital neighbors. When you talk about digital neighbors, every country in the world is your neighbor, technically. So I said, let's start and let's see where we really converge, where we look into it. And I that a lot of these discussions um, between Africa and Asia um, have just gained, I think, more relevance, um, you know, in contemporary times. I'm thinking, for instance, um, you know, there's certain open questions out there. There's initiatives that were launched, obviously, um, some years ago, following up uh, from the 1955 uh, Bandung Conference. Um, and in more recent experiences, uh, for connecting, integrating, and cooperating within Indo-Pacific regions in general, as well as between Southeast Asia and South Asia regions in particular. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, ASEAN as a regional organization has made great contribution to leading Southeast Asia towards progress and prosperity prosperity and uh, helping to create in so far as uh, the discussions that ensued uh, uh, today uh, what's uh, of paramount importance is the issue of uh, shared history uh, it's a shared history that uh, we in Africa as well as SAC and the countries within SAC as well as the countries within 
ASEAN have uh, a common uh, destiny, and that is colon 